Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fantastic episode. Happy Friday. This is We Just Love Games Game Stack Podcast, and you are listening to episode 82, Gone Fishing. I am your host, Vendertron, and joining this evening, joining us this evening, is the wonderful Rick. Hey, everybody. He- hello, Rick. And also, sh- also Shaleen. Hey, guys. How-, how are you guys doing? How was your week? Was it a total trash fire or was it less of a trash? I, I don't want to talk okay, about. Okay, we don't. We won't. It's fine. Everything's fine. Speak, speaking of of trash fires, um, someone should probably take a look at the title of the Twitch show. Oh, oh, did we forget to? Ch- I'll fix it. It's I'll fine. Fix it. Everything's fine. You guys fine. carry on. You carry on without me. I'm gonna fix it. So because for, right now we're playing the medium for our audio <laughs> listeners. We should just play the medium. That was a, that was a great okay, game. I'm doing a thing here. I'm doing a thing. Um. <laughs> For our audio listeners, my Windows operating system on my PC crashed several weeks ago. I have not had the chance to recover all of the assets that are used in producing these beautiful sounds that are coming to your ear holes. So I have had to ad hoc develop a new strategy for tonight's show. So I can't guarantee if things will go smoothly. We apologize in advance. So so we're just going to wing it. Yes, we are winging it tonight. Um, which is usually how things go anyways. So, yeah. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rick, how is your week? <laughs> what are you doing? You look like you're twisting some sort of knob kind there. Of the knob. <laughs> um, how is we your week? Like Winslow. Uh, it's been good, actually. Uh, got a whole bunch of new gear. And anytime I get new gear, new it's gear. like. Who? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Tell you know, us. abandoned radio stations giving away a bunch of a bunch of stuff they're going to throw away. And was it Three Dog? It's all in my house. What? No. It was, it was, it was Three Dog. Um, no, so it's just some real cool stuff. And every time that happens, you know, it's like a, it's like I'm doing heroin again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, during the Dave Chappelle. Meme. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's just I looking. like how you just all breeze past the fact that I said again. <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, it's, that's it's, fine. I mean, there's no judgments here, Rick. This is a safe place. A safe space. Safe space. Oh, good that I can do it here. Um. Well, welcome to the show. Happy Friday, everybody. Um. We are so mm-hmm. happy to have all of you lovely people back here again. If you are listening live, welcome. Kick back. Um, and get yourself a nice snack because tonight's show is going to be absolutely fantastic. We've got a lot of uh, great stuff coming down the pipeline. But before we get started, we have some things that we want to mention. Shaleen, do you want to tell the people about Joshy Theater? love to tell the people about joshy theater joshy theater is a, a lovely thing that happens uh it's a channel in our discord uh and on mondays josh shares with everybody uh, a marvel movie a different marvel movie every monday and this evening uh he will be bringing a a different film uh i'm just uh checking the the name of the film uh the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus after the show today. That's so. a Marvel movie? No, it's not a Marvel movie. Oh, okay. It is it is a non-Marvel film uh, that he just wanted to to gotcha. play in the Discord. So if you guys are interested in that, join join Joshi in the Joshi Theater channel if you would like to check that out. Yeah, I really have a feeling that Joshi Theater is going to morph into all other movies aside from marvel mm-hmm. theme so we Maybe. we certainly welcome that and if you want to uh, get in on a community movie uh, you are welcome to do so all you got to do is join our discord and we will tell you how to do that in a second but first we have a new announcement to make a new announcement we do um yes we do so as of well i guess today really um, I thought it would be a good idea for us to bring some other entertainment to our Discord. Um, and this was sort of, um, I guess, inspired by Joshy Theater, I guess you could say. Um, I've been wanting to do some readings on on online. Uh, and Twitch Terms of Service does not really allow for that. Um, you know, there is the Gutenberg site, which we, of course, we will read uncopyrighted material. 
um, to to protect the intellectual pro property of authors worldwide. Uh, and so, if you're interested in in listening in on some readings, we will be reading a new book on Sunday, and uh, we are introducing Vendor's Book Nook, which will take place Sunday evenings from six to eight p.m. Mountain Standard Time which would be 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested in diving into a new book with me, please join me in the Discord on uh, Vendor's Book Nook channel. And um, the, the, tw the chat has spoken. The community has spoken, you guys. The choice for this, this reading is going to be Carl Sagan's Demon Haunted World, Science Ooh. as a Candle in the Dark, which I I'm a little bit humbled uh, and a little bit surprised. So, are you guys familiar familiar with Carl Sagan? Oh yeah, yep. Carl Sagan, as we all know, brilliant scientist, physicist, ast astronomer, um, and uh, he wrote a book called um, "The Demon Haunted World: uh, Science as a Candle in the Dark," and it's all about um, embracing science as part of our society and how to understand it and how to approach it. Um, but he brings his own life experiences to that. And I was really surprised that, that people chose, uh, Carl Sagan, um, from all of the options that we had. So, um, so that will be the one that we start with. If you're interested, pop into, uh, Vendor's Book Nook in Discord. And if you're interested in joining the Discord, how can people do, how can people do that, Shaleen? You can join our Discord by clicking on the Discord link right below this Twitch page. That link is there even when the Twitch channel is not live. Alternately, you can send any of us a message on social media and we will get you an invitation. Mm -hmm. And we have some new people who have joined the Discord this week. Do you want to take us through those wonderful, wonderful people? I would love to. Welcome to the Discord, new people. We are very pleased to see you. So we have Numb to It All, who is also joining us here in the chat today for the first time. Welcome. Oh. Raven's View, Fried Badger 69, 49ers GM, Decon, and I believe you have a stat bot report for us as well. Um, yes, I'm just consulting the Oracle right now. Um <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're not going to believe who took the top spot for top message members. Mm. Tim Twig. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tim's mm -hmm. good people. Second in the slot, Captain Bones. Bonesy. And not too far behind, Joshy Neurotic. So lovely. I think this may be the first time that all three of us are not in the top three <laughs> spots. <laughs> We've been busy. <laughs> so. Well, it's no, I like to think of it as like we're the we're the mama bird, right? And we've done all the regurgitating into the baby bird's mouth, and now we're kind of like just pushed it out of the nest, and now it's taking off on its own. Rick, you're so, yeah. savage. Um, <laughs> we are still hovering around that four hundred and thirty six thirty seven yeah. mark for members in the Discord. If you're interested, please come and join. The community is very very busy, very active. Um, and, and the top three channels remain to be Fallout 76, GIF Wars, and The Lobby, of course. So um, thank you to all of the people who have come in and supported our community. It's yeah. crazy to think that we almost have 500 people in there. Almost. Like it's, it's, almost. I mean, I always like to round up extra. So <laughs> <laughs> By what? Like, uh, um, what is it? 60? Shh. We don't talk about Six? It. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we're going to talk about some news. We're going to bring you through the stock market, which has been a bit of a roller coaster. Also, I have a wonderful oh, new oh, game oh. science segment for you guys this week. And we're going to go through our gameplay. Are you going to blind us with science? I'm going to blind you with science. But first, new this just <laughs> in. As always, shout out to Joseph Tao for uh, putting the news together for us. We always appreciate all of the hard work that you put in. Um, why are you laughing? Why, why is this so? But no, no, because this just in is now in my list of things not to say during sex. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Rick! <laughs> now we have to put it. You asked. We have to put a PG. 
We have to put the R-rated status on the. No, we don't. We just mentioned the sex word. Roblox. Can, Roblox. Can you do it? Can you has... do it in the old timey newscaster voice? <laughs> <laughs> this just did. <laughs> I can't. I I can't even. Uh, I can't even. I can't. Roblox nope. tops forty-five billion on the first day of trading. What is uh, Roblox? Roblox. You guys don't know what Roblox is. Uh, I know I, that I they think it's some kind of kids game, game right? Road. Good for you because I don't know either. So, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, yeah. Roblox. Okay, um, okay. yeah. <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> okay, that's another one to the list. Um, <laughs> so I think Roblox are like, aren't they like fake Legos? Roblox? No, that's Mega Bloks. No, but isn't Roblox another one? No, Roblox is like a, I think it started out as a, as a bit of a Minecraft themed situation, but then people started modding stuff in and now it's just this crazy like experience okay. where so so Robo Roblox is an online platform and storefront where users go to play games um, Roblox itself is not actually a game it is a place where people play games made by other developers and so um, with this in mind it is more similar to a PC platform Kinda that like you like Gary's mod No it is more like Steam It it's more like Steam um so so what make what makes Roblox different from any uh anything else in the industry is that um it um all of the games are made by its users. So on Roblox, the fun just doesn't come from playing games. It also comes from making games themselves. And so um the 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 corporation itself has um, boasted that its users have published over 20 million games on the platform. And, you know, you might be wondering why everybody is talking about Roblox right now. Well, that's because anyone, including kids, can make a ton of money on the platform. And mm -hmm. some developers can earn as much as one million in a single year by monetizing their games. This article comes from Polygon, uh, written by Anna Diaz. So thank you for for contributing to this, Anna. Um, and yes, yeah, so Roblox and all of the games that are freely available on its platform um, are are bought and spent using a virtual currency called Robux which is an aesthetic uh, item within the Roblox games, g games platform. And so a developer makes enough money, and if a developer makes enough money in Ro Robux, uh, they can use a program called Developer Exchange, aka DevX, to convert the Robux into real money. And so... Um, Yes, so so this is what has spurred the the recent interest in Roblox and, and topping their forty five billion on the first day of trading on the stock market. Um, now this next article comes to us from the New York Times, uh, written by Kellen Browning, and um, he goes on to say that you know the pandemic has really forced a lot of people indoors. People have had a lot of time on their hands, and so where has that led them? the the effect of um, investing in the stock market and as we have previously reported GameStop and the sudden interest in diamond hands um so yeah ha are you guys familiar with, with roblox no I, man i mean i Not have no really idea at all. I've, I've heard a little bit about it but no this is one of those things that define us as adults yeah, I because feel like this, we don't yeah, get it, and this we, ages that's us. for the kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what what kids we just lost tons of credibility with all of our listeners, like kids, under thirty kids investing <laughs> in the cares? stock market. Does anybody have a problem with this? Well, this it does sound a little weird when it it it, it kind of focuses on. I mean, the way you described it, it's like kids are doing things to make the money. And we're children back can literally make Robux and turn them into real money. 
I, think I mean, I'm if, cool with that. I think that's fantastic. I was gonna Kids say, should learn a work ethic. Yeah, it's an entrepreneurial thing that they can learn as long as it's not predatory. It's a modern like, day lemonade stand. I was going to go with Victorian era child labor camps. That's fine. Yeah, we'll go with the modern day lemonade, uh, lemonade stand. But as long as it's not predatory like the like some of the like, cell phone apps that are kind of directed towards tap here, kids, to make your building better. And then you tap and then the parent's cell phone gets charged money and that whole thing that's going on. I think in Germany right now, the lawsuit, or I think it's Germany. Um, anyway, I don't have a problem with kids earning money because they're just wallet suckers. So it'd be good for them to earn their keep. Yeah. Other than using mommy and daddy's credit card. Yeah. Um, yeah. Video game makers uh, like Take-Two Interactive and EA have tried to outbid one another to buy up smaller competitors. Um, hundreds of gaming startups have sprung up during the pandemic. Uh, and, and this is um, quoted by Evan Van Zelfden, the managing director for Games One. Um, and he goes on to say, it seems like there is a new startup funded nearly every day. He said, everybody wants to be the next Roblox. Um, but <laughs> he also so questions how long this frenzy can really last mm -hmm. um, under increasing scrutiny, right? And so... You know, with vaccinations rolling out, the pandemic restrictions easing, one might question themselves how long this uh, fiscal behavior can really continue. Um, and, you know, in hindsight, this article may have been more appropriate for our game stock segment. Um, <laughs> but I think that, you know, there's I, I, I don't know. I, I, I have been watching the stock stock market very closely in the last two weeks, and I have been questioning myself in whether or not I should invest in and enter into the gaming market. I, I, I think proven companies are a good ticket for longevity, unless some disaster may fall a company. Um, things like Roblox... I think I think the last few years, especially 2020, has really taught us how volatile the market has gotten mm -hmm. and how many startups come and how many things go. I mean, if you mm -hmm. look at Silicon Valley, how many tech startups that happen and then they disappear, they're a flash in a pan. And, and it, if for people who invest their money, I think it's probably, again, we're not investors. We don't know anything about it. We're just talking out of our mouth holes. And so it's probably better to have a mentality of, Things are like n not longevity. I don't know what the opposite of that is, but short term investments rather than long term things, unless it's a proven company, because everything's a flash in the pan. I don't know if this particular platform is going to last longer when kids start going back to physical schools and they're not home, you know, because right now my daughter has school at home, but she's it's not eight hours. It's like five or six hours worth of work and then she's doing whatever she wants so i mean the scary thing, kids have a lot of time on their hands right now the scary thing that we have come to realize with game stock stop game stop sorry it's such a tongue well twister. i know it's the scary thing we have come to realize with gme is that the stock market is now a game for people and I mean, it's, although it's it has from the start, too. exactly, although it has been amongst the elitists, always mm -hmm. a game um, for the middle class and lower class, it is now also a game. And so um, that is a scary prospect because we're going to see a lot of volatility across the, the market. What we do know about Roblox is that it was founded in 2004 by by um, Eric Castle who uh, and colleagues who were engineers and entrepreneurs. The site was actually released in, in 2006. Um, it's virtually an online universe which players can interact and choose from more than 20 million unique games. Uh, they can use their avatars to break out of prison, explore tropical jungles, etc. Um the platform itself is enriched by a lot of developers who make video games and digital accessories. Um, and those who, those who go on to create some of the most popular Roblox games can earn quite a significant amount of money. Uh, one developer and shoemaker at the age of 21 said that she earned more than $500,000 from the platform, most of it since the pandemic began. And did you, um, did you say shoemaker? 
Yeah. And Shoemaker. Like she was like Shoemaker turned developer? No, her last name is Shoemaker. Oh. <laughs> it's like it's such an odd. <laughs> People have last names that are Shoemaker. I know, I lived near a bunch of them. Oh, okay. So. Um, I just, I, the way you said it, you said like something a shoemaker, not Anne. I missed the Anne. Anne Shoemaker, I, yes, yeah, has made right. almost five hundred thousand dollars from the platform since the p- pandemic began, and she has used some of that money to hire two employees and a dozen contractors. So the pandemic has really fueled a lot of this success. What I fear the most from this is that uh, we're going to get a lot of startups, but there is a depression coming. I mean, and a lot some, of people, I feel like we've already had a lot of depression. It, it's it's been a tough year. Lots of depression. It's been a tough year, um, but I think the the fiscal hardships that are facing Canadians and Americans and elsewhere um, has yet to come. So, some no, some it's it's. If it, I don't think it's so much a depression. I think it's just a, a widening of the the gaps between the mm-hmm. tiers. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's everyone's going to get hit. Um, mm-hmm. Not everyone is getting hit. Some people are making hand over fist, and some people. Well, are as we have seen not. historically, the rich get richer, right? So, yeah, but mm-hmm. but I I I just think that Roblox and people who are making money off of that platform is showing a paradigm shift in just the marketplace in general around the world where if a company won't hire you a lot of people are turning to making their own thing right and i find that really refreshing um and i honestly think that's what's kept most things from a financial financial collapse is just people making things themselves rather than collecting unemployment or doing both um or making just eventually making a business for themselves. I think I think it's been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of my friends just mm-hmm. figure out how to live mm-hmm. and change their complete MO. You know, artists who were artists have switched and done something else to make to make ends meet until mm-hmm. they can like start playing music again. And it's just mm-hmm. uh it's really, really cool to see people figuring out how to make mm-hmm. do. Yeah, we need to strike a balance, I think. Um Um, there, you know, there are people that are not capable of being Mm -hmm. able to achieve those those successes and, and, um, that's where government is important. Um, and and finding that independence is also equally important. Um, but I think we, we have to work together as a society, but what we see in spurring up all of these new smaller companies is, is that, um, we can we are no longer in a place where we rely on big corporations which is a good thing yeah yes and no i mean we're all on windows pcs it's a, it's, a it's, one those, it's one of those it's one of those weird or... default things right it it's just people do it because that's what the choice is um yeah your choice is fish and you know what when we're when all three of us are in our 50s and 60s and there's like i don't know mango or something out we're gonna be going oh that mango you know it's crazy back in my day we had apple it was it was it was the thing it should still like you know so i don't know yeah (laughs) i mean they've become invisible in the sense that like they're just a part of our lives now we don't even think of of them as companies it's It's, like kleenex weird the word kleenex right Right, it's not a Kleenex. It's it's a tissue, tissue, but we still call it Kleenex because Kleenex. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But uh, how did we get here? I don't know. Bethesda's doing a thing, you guys. Twenty games, really? twenty different games will be available on Xbox Game Pass, including Oblivion, Morrowind, The Evil Within, Prey, Fallout Four, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout seventy six, Doom. Doom 2, Doom 3, Doom 64, Doom Eternal, Elder Scrolls 3, uh, Elder Scrolls 4, Elder Scrolls 5, also online, and uh, Rage 2 and the Wolfenstein series will all be available on Xbox Game Pass coming, uh, do we have a date for this? Hmm. It's today, I believe. Is it today? Mm-hmm. Oh, the Bethesda games, yeah, they're on. They're they're up. They're ready. I'm actually really excited about this. Oh, really? Because most of these titles are are not only coming to Game Pass for console, 
They're also coming to Game Pass for PC, mm. which means a new PC achievement list. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exactly what it means. So I can now dump another thousand hours into Fallout 4, Skyrim, Dishonored 2, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and and get the the sweet sweet serotonin from that achievement sound. Serotonin. <laughs> Um, are you actually going to dump a thousand hours in, or are you just going to start it and then stop? Shut up, Rick. <laughs> you don't have to attack me like I, that. I thought that Evil Within <laughs> would be a great survival horror Sunday game, by the way. I think that is an excellent idea. That's one that I've had kind of in the background of my brain for a while. Uh, yeah. I've wanted to. I've wanted to play that game mm-hmm. for. A long I think time, we though. should definitely do that for a survival horror Sunday. Maybe after the medium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys? Are you guys gonna? utilize the the bethesda games that are coming probably the evil within definitely um like rick i know you've done the wolfenstein series as well as fallout any interest in doom or rage or sky like elder scrolls doom probably now that it's on pc i played doom for like the uh, console and i just i can't do the it's a, so fast paced i can't do the joystick thing so mm-hmm. maybe now that uh doom is out for pc i'll give it a give it a shot right right what about you Shaleen? oh absolutely but i i'm gonna use it for these games that i've already played a million times right, right. <laughs> and I, i'm gonna get those achievements all over again That'd and cool. and it's gonna be like like lovely comfort food <laughs> <laughs> i love it <clears throat> awesome yeah, I don't know if I'll like. I don't have the Xbox Games Pass. I I had it for like one month just to see what it was like, and then I never really went back to it. So it is a great value, especially. I don't know when they're combining EA Play with the Xbox Game Pass for PC. Um, I don't know. It's done on on the console. Yes. Yeah, but I don't know when it happens for PC. So now that Xbox, now with Xbox Live, you can get. EA games, Bethesda games, Xbox games, and so now they're their developers for like 15 bucks a month. I can't believe it's the insane. value of Game Pass. It's, it's just, insane. it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, Van Sylvan in the chat asked about the Outer Worlds last and final DLC. I never played any of their DLCs. Yeah. I couldn't go back into that game. Outer Actually, Worlds broke my heart. I, I, I'm thinking about jumping back in for that new DLC. Because it looks very cool. It's outer, noir, right? Outer yes. Worlds, Outer Worlds for me deserves a playthrough, but I just can't get to it. I I just have this struggle in 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 starting. Yeah. Um. It came out and I played it and I was all excited about it and then I never went back to it. And I I don't know what's wrong with me because I'm still interested in playing it, but I just I don't know. It was one of those games that when it came out, I found my playstyle, and that was my playstyle. And then when I tried to make characters that weren't that playstyle, it just didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't fit. It's weird, um, right? It, yeah, it's it's such a good game, but it's like I I can't explain it. It's it's like one of those. I don't know. It was good, but for some reason, it just didn't. Yeah. Stick. And yep. I feel bad for saying that because I really liked no. the writing. I liked the characters. I, I think that the fact that we all feel that same way illustrates the phenomenon around that game yeah. that that we can't really explain, and, and that's fine. Right. It felt a little one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. Good, but it felt like... I think what it was for me was the restriction of the world. Um, How you know, like quasi open world. You had yes, you had to go a certain path, even if you deviated, you still ended up on that same path. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was yeah. very restrictive in that sense. I don't know. I'm just so used one to one thing that I really now. was impressed with though was the the level design in yeah. terms of traversal, because while you were going to the same place you had three or four different options of how to get inside that building. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I found myself uh, going through a lot of, of ventilation shafts and stuff because dishonored. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy that. I appreciated yeah. that very much. There yeah. were a lot of um, different traversal options. Well, the, but see, I was the opposite where like, I would like come through the battle dripping in like blood and then I'll look over and then there's like the vent right there. And I'm like, kind <laughs> of walk through the vent. <laughs> but but yeah the choices were great like they the choices really did change the game and 
and what you could access and what you couldn't access. And I really mm-hmm. thought that was cool. But again, it's just, you're right. You always go through the same path, you know, like one of those, like uh, choose your own adventure books, you mm-hmm. know, it's fun the first or second time maybe through but then after that you're kind of like i know where this is gonna go you know kind of thing which begs the but, question do we demand more now as gamers in terms of huh? content uh don't 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 bring us down to that level because you might be right because <laughs> <laughs> you, next you up be right. holodecks like you know? well i no i don't think that's true though because i mean look at sanua's the hellblade look how simple that game was it's mm-hmm. a simple story no choice you just go through and how much we all loved it yeah so. yeah it is it it outer worlds is a strange strange yeah. place strange I'm game. installing it right now <laughs> <laughs> well Did we lose our fishing partner do you guys know what else is strange square Things? enix is going to reveal a new installment of life is strange on march 18th Woo. Yes, Shaleen, that means that we have I to... I cannot wait. We have to revive. I can't wait. We have to revive. Do you guys want to watch the trailer? Yes, let's see. I, I, know I might be able tra- to I might be able to make this happen. Uh, oh, that's the trailer for Life is Strange 2. Is that is that this? Yeah, that's, that's no, not... No, it's episode 5 coming soon, it says. No, no, no. Oh. That already came. Oh, that, that happened. OK, well, anyways, we should um, we should catch up with tell me why, though. Yes, we should. So so mm-hmm. Square Enix is going to host a presentation on March 18th I'm in which excited. they will reveal the next installment of Life is Strange. And so um, we expect that it will feature a new protagonist um, who will have a new power and as can you can you just sort of walk us through the last Life is Strange, Shaleen, and the powers and the characters? Okay, so Life is Strange two, we followed the Diaz brothers, uh, Daniel and Sean. Uh, Daniel was the little one. Uh, Sean was the older brother, and Daniel uh, turned out to have some some telekinetic powers, so he could move things with his mind. Um, and Daniel and Sean were on the run from a terrible misunderstanding in which their father was killed, uh, a policeman was also killed, and they were blamed for it. So they they spent the game running away from the authority. Spoilers for Life is Strange 2, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. There is a full playthrough of Vendor and I playing this game. If you would like to check that out on our YouTube channel, it was great. Um, we both cried at the end. It was glorious. Uh, I just... And and um, they they learned like how how to make their own way in the world, and also how to control Daniel's powers. Mm-hmm. And uh, they uh, there are a few different options for how it ends. Um, we we got an interesting one. It was it was. I, I definitely, definitely teared up. I have a question for you, Shaleen. Hmm. Which story arc did you like better? The brothers or the friends? The two friends? Okay, now we've got like three options to choose from because there was also Life is Strange Before the Storm. Right. So we have Max and Chloe of the right. original Life is Strange, but we also have Rachel and Chloe, Rachel and Chloe. from Before the Storm. And... um. And of course the Diaz brothers. And I really, I feel like the original Life is Strange is, was probably the best written story. Um, but I, I did really like getting to know Rachel Amber in the, Before the Storm. But at the same time, there's a very special place in my heart for the Diaz brothers. Right. Because there is... Uh, there is is just not enough representation of, of Hispanics and Hispanic Absolutely. culture in, in gaming. Absolutely, and it was really fantastic seeing, uh, you know, something of myself represented in a video game, as you know, these biracial brothers, um, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the the things they went through um, mm-hmm. were some of the things that I've also gone through. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like telekinetic powers and uh, that kind of thing. You know, I, casual I racism com- casual racism is rel- what i mean but um yeah it's it's so there was something special about Chat's each of like those. wait what um, <laughs> there was something special about each game yeah for sure and, and each set of characters 
So, so Stephanie Ninelli in, in VG247, uh, this VG247 article says, you know, um, in the, in the last entry of Life is Strange 2, they followed along the story and they described the series first episode as explicitly political, directly addressing the current state of American discourse. Um, and they reviewed that further. But um, I think, you know, this this new episode, you know, Square Enix has also shared that they're going to discuss updates on Outriders, uh, Bound Wonderland, Wonder, Wonder World, Marvel's Avengers and the upcoming Just Cause mobile title as well. So you can expect some news regarding those um, those titles as part of um their uh ongoing celebration for the 25th anniversary of tomb raider uh which is um also part of the square enix montreal studio and um their sister company uh tato so that presentation will feature trailers from those games as well and that will kick off at 10 a.m pacific standard time eastern standard time or 5 p.m sorry 1 p.m eastern standard time 5 p.m uk um, and it'll last around 40 minutes and that will be on March 18th once again. So, so be, be aware of that. Um, probably on their Twitch page, on their YouTube page, uh, you could probably find it on Twitter as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. I'm excited for us to revive the Life is Strange story. I mean, Judgy Jesus was the last thing that we had to remember. From... Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Judgy Jesus was everything. <laughs> Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> Rick, do you want to take this next story? I feel like this is your domain. Do you Huh? Do you No, I don't I don't have Microsoft's domain. They All right, are. Microsoft. But so I will take No, no, I was making I was oh, making an IT see. joke. Okay. Domain, okay. domain name. Yes. Yeah. Um So okay. uh Microsoft announced on Tuesday that Exchange email product had been hacked. <gasps> and that it believes that China <gasps> is behind the attack. <laughs> Tom Burt, Microsoft's corporate vice president of customer security and trust, wrote in a blog post that his company had identified by vendor uh, a state-sponsored threat actor referred to as Hafinium. And so what they did, uh, by the way, exchange servers are kind of like business side, business client email addresses, not so much individual Microsoft emails. This is for companies, corporations that use their exchange servers for emails. So it's a prime target for hackers. What they did were they, they were able to put malware in their computers and gain access to it. And once they were able to um, get access to it, they were creating a web shell, which then they could use commands to maneuver around and look at various aspects of their servers. Um, I make a bad joke. Yeah. I think that Nathan Fillion should make a clothing line and call it malware. <laughs> what did I come back to? Sorry like about it. that. I like it. <laughs> I really, I really like it. <clears throat> yeah. I'd wear that brown coat. I'll, I... so yeah. In addition to Microsoft warning people about it, they've also issued several security updates. So if you at home are listening and you are on an exchange server or handle one, make some up dates because Athenium and any other threat actors are going to be trying to get in through these of vulnerabilities unless you update. There's no evidence of Hafenium targeting individual consumers or any other Microsoft products that were impacted. There's also no evidence that this was part of the giganormous SolarWinds attack because that was done by Kazibear, APT27. That was uh, Russian uh, who did that, SolarWinds. But, uh, the <laughs> Chinese Foreign Ministry, of course, says... <laughs> There's not enough evidence to suggest that we have done this. Uh, so, yeah, typically what happens is there's particular signatures and malware that are over time. It's like it's like a serial killer signing a kill. Over time, you can start to figure out, OK, this is the same person because this malware has the same sort of topology, the same sort of coding. It's got a signature to it. And you can kind of put those with advanced persistent threats. Um, and so I guess they were able to find malware consistent with Hafinium type malware. Just like with the SolarWinds attack, they were able to find malware and signatures consistent with Kazibear. Um, 
so that's probably where they're getting the whole idea that it's from China. It's pretty easy to figure out who's a state actor and who's not because it's like very, very, very sophisticated hacks that states are able to do because they have money and mm -hmm. people. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot over COVID. There has been a lot, a lot of hacks, a lot of zero day attacks. If you are curious whether or not your information has leaked out there, there's a website you can go to. No, this is not my hacky site. Um, I think it's, it's <laughs> Rick's gathering all of your hmm, yes, search search information. No, uh, it's it's um, have I been pwned? You go to have I been pwned? Pwned is spelled P W. Wait, I got have I been. Oh, we're doing it live. Pond. Okay. I, I'm almost certain that I've been hacked. Oh, sure. And then you type in your email address and click pwned, and then it will tell you what attacks your email okay. address was compromised first, and what information. First, we're going to check my, my work email. I'm going to check my old email. Which has probably has. most definitely been hacked. Oh, no. Pond in six data breaches. Uh-oh. 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 This was fascinating. I'm going to check on Okay, mine. breaches you were pawned in. Chegg, Dropbox, Evite. I don't even know what Evite is. That's, yeah. My Fitness Pal, which I don't even use and have mm -hmm. never had before in my life. Share this. No idea what that is. Zynga never used it. What? Okay. Yeah. That, All right. See, this, is, this is where things get crazy. Let's like, check right, my pod. Let's check. Let's check the podcast email. We're Real quick, my old email address that I had have switched away from now, I've been hacked in Canva, Eat Street, Lumen bitch. PDF, My Fitness Pal, MySpace, Nexus Mods, Reverb Nation, Sonic Bids, Ticket Fly, and Zynga. Okay. Jesus. I don't even want to leave the house now. That has nothing to do with it, but my my podcast email has actually been uh, has actually experienced less data breaches than my work email. And uh, I mean, I guess that makes sense because my work email has more digital traction in terms of yeah. publications and things like that. But Jesus. What you can do Freaking at Dropbox, home, use a password manager. I use LastPass. I remember one very complicated password. Everything else, randomly generated passwords. I couldn't tell you them if I if I tried, but they're all in my little password manager and anywhere that you can enable two factor authentication that will help you in the case that some of your information does get leaked. So yeah, that's, it's been a rough year for, for this us. This is it's why I wanted you for hackers. This is why I wanted you to take this article. Yeah. Hacking is fun. Um, Shaleen, do you want to take us through our next segment, which is. GameStock. I would love to take us through GameStock. Um, these stats are as of closing. Oh, that, uh, that that's March that's, March twelfth. Today's date is yeah. March eleventh, twelve twelve. March twelfth, <laughs> and uh, wow. these are in U.S. dollars. Uh, and the plus minus spread is since our last episode two weeks ago. So everything is is down. Every, almost everything is down. It's it's gone poorly. Sony is at 104.38 down 22 cents from last time. Microsoft is at $235.75 down $1.38. Nintendo a dollar. <laughs> a dollar. Nintendo is at 69.20 down 19 cents. Take two is at 170.25 down 36 cents. Activision has actually crept up a little bit, uh, rising 95 cents to reach $93.04. Ubisoft is at 15.61 down 19 cents. EA is at $130.49 a share down 85 cents. Tencent has had the biggest drop. Uh, at 8257, it lowered 671 since last time. And the one real winner is GameStop, which is at two sixty four fifty, up eight dollars and thirty cents since two weeks ago. What a wild world this is! 
it wasn't that long ago that GameStop stocks were worth less than $8.30. What is happening? Like, what is happening? Wild, wild world. It's, wild, wild world. I don't even know. I, I, I just... <sighs> Every once in a while, something happens where you're like... It, it changes your perspective. You think you have control. You think everything is normal. And something <laughs> Nobody happens has and control. Realize, Come on. <laughs> and, and, and I feel like as much as this whole thing sucked, we kind of needed this as a world because things were pretty gel and there was the wars. They were typical. And the, this discourse and that discourse and this country hate this country and everything. And then all of a sudden pandemic and everything's changed. And we all go, huh, maybe we aren't masters of the universe here. Mm. And I'm, you know, I mean, we would have and like the biggest upset to our normality was the GameStop stock. <laughs> really, uh... It was because you're like, all right, I can see the death mosquitoes. No, that's not right. That's Valheim. The big giant killer bees that were in 2020. I can see, you know, potential war with Rome was happening. I can see a pandemic, but GameStop stock going crazy. Nope. Never saw that coming. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, hold on to your butts, boys and girls, because there is a new ETF that uh, is going to target the video game tech industry. And that is. So what is that in English? Uh, uh, um, exchange traded fund. What does that okay. mean? Okay. So yeah. it's or electronically, Same. electronically traded. Fu- uh, let me see. ETF. The, explain this to us like we're six years old. Exchange traded fund. Um, so so these are the type of funds that are that are um, uh, they're they're a security that tracks um commodities and other assets that can be purchased or sold on stock exchange. The same as a regular stock. So. Oh. Um, so, I mean, to put it another way, they're similar to a lot of mutual funds and things like that. Um, and they can be sold throughout the day on various stock exchanges. Um, so, so that's the difference, but there is a new emerging, um, ETF called Gamer. Um, and the, uh, the Wed Bush ETF video game tech ETF called Gamer is now offering investors the opportunity to invest in the video game technology industry, including game developers, consoles, and chip manufacturers and game retailers. This is actually pretty big news. Yeah. Um, the game industry, as we know, has historically been quite stagnant and quiet on the TSX, the Dow, um, and, and the New York Stock Exchange. And so this um, is, I, I, I feel like this is the um, coming of the season for video game stocks, in a, in a sense. I think it's because the, I feel like interest in gaming has really exploded due to the pandemic. Absolutely. So we know that the video game industry has really benefited from from people staying at home and and the the, the COVID-19 public health restrictions issued by various governments throughout the world. Now, this sector has provided many of its customers with affordable and easily accessible sources of entertainment, but... Um, Gamer as a stock has massively, massively outperformed uh, the market as a whole in the last 12 months. Uh, they have actually delivered total returns of 98% compared to just 31.5% of the broader video game market. And so there's uh, uh, speculators think that there's no doubt that the pandemic has been a... <laughs> game changer uh for for the gaming industry and um you know things like sporting events and general leisure leisure activities have sort of taken a back seat to to what's been going on and so we have seen this sort of explosion of um esports and other video game empires um, so within within the United States as well, we it, it is estimated that an average uh, the average American adult spends close to an hour a day playing some form of a video game, uh, which is actually quite substantial if you think about it. So it really is, yeah, right. And so, gamer as a global fund investor. 
um, has the majority of its asset assets, which are invested outside of the U.S., um, and uh, it has significant exposure to various Asian stock markets and things like that. Um, but if I were you, I would keep your eye uh, on this ETF uh, holding. Yeah. So that's that's what we have for GameStop. We're not professionals or experts in trading. Do not take our advice seriously. Um, we don't really know what we're talking about, but it is an important segment to include in the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Up next, let's talk about science. Yeah, turn all the knobs. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> as you guys know, we have a wonderful game science segment as part of Game Stock Podcast. Game Stack Podcast. Um, <clears throat> okay, wow. so so this game science is, is sort of my bread and butter. Um, it's it's my baby. It's what I do. Um, I wanted to talk this week about something that is personal to me, but also bring in a little bit of science around it and, and maybe sway some of your guys's opinions or perspectives or worldviews, uh, about video games. And so, um, I, what was it last week? I think it was last week, last week, Thursday or Friday. My so so here's the backstory. My my dad it likes to likes golf. Golf okay. is his thing. He loves golf. Um and we have winter eight months out of the year, so he doesn't oh, yeah. he doesn't get to golf during that time. And even now he doesn't get to golf a lot. And um so him and my brother have taken it upon themselves to partake and enjoy golf video games. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. And so <clears throat> um, this is something that they have actually apparently done for many, many, many years um, without my... <laughs> Boom. What? What? <laughs> it's water. Oh. It's just water. Okay. I put it in this really cool bottle, though. But... Mm. Yeah. Okay. Just... Um, anyways. It makes a dramatic noise. Um, I quite enjoy it. Anyways. So... I'm going um, driving once. My... Um, so, so, so my... my my I, I I I go into the kitchen and my parents are talking about something that I could sense was sort of tech related. Um they were talking about audio. And I'm like, hmm? What what? What? I can probably help with this. They were talking about how my brother and my my dad would be able to play their video game, their golf game um on the computer without having to use the phone so what they would do is that they would call each other on the phone okay play the game the golf game on the computer and they would play music through the phone while they're on the phone with each other oh no um well i mean most of us realize that you can have all of that beautiful stuff all in one place it's called discord or zoom or any sort of video conferencing software but my dad and my brother had no knowledge of this, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, well, have you heard of Discord? <laughs> right? And they were like, well, no. And and so I got them on Discord and um they they wanted to play golf. And and so I set them up on Discord and I realized that the my the the computer that my dad was using to play golf was this terrible paperweight of a laptop that was barely running Windows 10. The the screen on the laptop was broken in such a way that the ink from the LCD was sort of running through the pixels and part of the screen was black and he had it connected to his TV so that he could actually see the screen and it was just it was a mess. It was a mess. And I looked at this and I thought to myself, this is awful. So I said, you know what? Let's go to Memory Express. So we went to Memory Express, which is in Canada. It's like the tech hardware place that you get all the computer parts and stuff. Um, and I bought him a new gaming laptop. Oh, nice. So my dad now has a better gaming PC than I do. That is amazing. <laughs> that is just amazing. And... Um, and uh, they now they have they have tossed the old golf game aside 
and uh, they are now playing the new fancy fangled golf game that you you know only the elites play um and they're having the time of their life on discord and they can play music in the same channel and everything is there that is so great so that's the backstory the backstory to the game science segment and you might be wondering why does vendor's personal life have anything to do with science well here we go so my father several years ago experienced um a mini stroke and um, for those of you who have experienced stroke in your families, it is not something to be taken lightly. Um, those who have many strokes are very lucky in, in respect to, you know, getting off easily in terms of, you know, personal physical ailments. Um, in some instances, a person who has a major stroke um, are is debilitated for life. They are incapable of eating their food, incapable of speech, uh, incapable of being able to move. And so this is what um, the game science segment has really spurred for me this week is, is a lot of personal experiences. But I wanted to talk a little bit about physical rehabilitation around stroke victims and the importance of video games. So... Um, I realized that after, you know, buying my dad this gaming laptop was that I didn't just buy it just because he wanted to enjoy this game. I bought it because I wanted him to be able to improve his health. And, and stroke victims have shown through rehabilitation that video games have actually improved motor function. That has been shown in the research. So physical rehabilitation, you know, we know is a long and difficult process that has hindered many difficulties. Um, physicians all over the world has have encountered patients with with conditions uh, that required physical rehabilitation. Um, a lot of people who experience that are limited in terms of their ability to exercise, um, manage fiscal issues, you know, difficulty being mobile and stuff like that. However, over the last few years, um, user experiences with video games have actually changed from passive, a relatively passive player seated with a controller in one hand, to active playing. That is to say, video game software tracking a person's physical movements. Um, and so active gaming has really... Um, spurred a lot of high-level physical activity amongst gamers, and I think we've seen a lot of this with the Wii, right? Yeah. Um, and people using the Wii to play tennis and bowling and all that kinds of stuff. Nintendo really paved the way for... I mean, some of you might argue that Duck Hunt was really where the physical activity in video <laughs> games started, but... Um, so, so, so um, I want to feature a specific article within this game science segment that is published by... Um, uh, Bruno and colleagues, it's called The Use of Commercial Video Games in Rehabilitation. And it's a systematic review. And if, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term systematic review, it's where researchers take all of the evidence that's currently out there and they review it and combine it into a single article that is very clear and succinct and easy to understand. So okay. what they so what they did was they looked at all of these different studies and they evaluated the effectiveness of different video games um, in respect to physical rehabilitation of stroke victims. And what they found was that, um, well, first of all, they included people who were um, involved in in physical rehab programs and. Um, and the intervention was that these people would participate in video games. Uh, the control group or the people who were, uh, you know, the, the comparison um, of individuals who didn't have any sort of issues didn't partake in any sort of video game play. Um, and what they basically found was that um, 166 of the 166 studies on video games in physical rehabilitation, um, they found that um, patients overall who used video games actually had shown to have improved physical and motor function, um, especially among stroke victims, um, and most patients required... Uh, that required physical uh, rehabilitation uh, showed improvement within um, 
a certain period of time. And so I think the take home message here is that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, what's the word, Shaleen? Um, there's a lot of comments against video games. There's a lot of sort of um, derogatory sentiment against I video was games. <laughs> um, what, I'm trying to find that word. Um, like uh, negative opposition, opposition, um, negative, negative, negative ideas. Um, yeah, towards misconception, misconceptions towards video games. And the reality is, is that it actually can be very beneficial for all ages in therapy for mental, cognitive, and physical um, issues that people are facing. And right. if you guys listen to the last episode, Game Stack, and the one previous, we talk about how video games are positive for therapeutic reasons for mental illness. And so this segment focuses on stroke vic victims and and those who have motor function um, um, issues with with you know fine motor function and balance um right. now i mean obviously in the case of my father mini stroke um very uh considered minor but also very serious um that is that is no excuse to just ignore it and so if you have a family member who is a victim of stroke um video games may be a good option for them to improve their motor function and so i would recommend that you consider that uh if you haven't already done so so that's that is today's gigs, uh, uh, game science segment. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It was a little bit personal for me, and um, we're gonna go into what we're playing. I don't actually have the bumper for that. Um, I don't think we have we don't a bumper. have a bumper for that oh, actually. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. So so Rick, what have you been playing? Metro. Me I've been <laughs> playing. I've been playing Metro Exodus again. Uh, it's been a nice change of pace to go back to that game um and i'll talk a little bit about like how it's structured i think i have before but it's it's, it's quasi open world fit in with some linear levels so like the first level you get to it's pretty well flooded you have to get around for the most part by boat um it's they take a very kind of balance between realism and and not realistic so like if you're walking through heavy brush, you can only walk really slow and you know, it's, you're not jumping real high and stuff like that. And then the second level is this um, underground bunker where there's like cannibals chasing you and stuff. And then the third little map is like uh, Kazakhstan. It's in a desert. The Caspian Sea is drained basically. And there's oil and shipwrecks everywhere. And you can like crawl into the shipwrecks and um, you know, do you know it at night it's really cool and, and terrifying and and so i've got through that and what you're trying to do is you're taking this train and you're trying to find a new place to settle is basically what you're trying to do for metro 2033 and last light you assume that the only livable habitable place left is moscow and only then you can only be underground so you figure out in exodus that you can actually leave the city limits and that's what we've done um and so now what happened was me and another guy uh i can't remember his name ashala i can't remember but anyway we're scouting forward this is an npc uh, or yeah he's an npc um it's a single player only game um very heavily story based um the it's a silent protagonist and it's frustrating because like the protagonist will talk during loading screens like he's writing in a journal and he'll read his journal entries yeah so have a voice actor mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. but like is it like, still artium yeah and they're like artium okay. respond and it's just like and i'm like but you have a voice yeah, actor that's for him. weird Ugh. that's weird that he doesn't speak yeah it, that's the one thing i don't like about it um but but anyway other than that it's 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 pretty it's a really fun game and so we were scouting forward ahead of the train and the rails collapsed and now Alyosha got ca captured and we're trying to head to this dam and uh i'm trying to catch up with him is basically what's happening and oh, we're okay. pursued by packs of feral wolves and a very big giant bear 
So, and this is a more linear level. It's not as open world, uh, but it's 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 a good one. I think there's, I think there's another one after this. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but anyway, I've beat the game once. I'm getting new achievements, so that feels good. Um, Always fun. Yeah, some of the, the like depending the the choices change the outcome of the levels, but you don't even know the choices you're making until you've made them and then like the screen will flash a little bit and go Shh, kind of thing you're like oh like that was it that was a choice i made yeah um and that uh -oh. i thought i was doing everything right no what? no nothing continue okay <laughs> i thought every, i was doing everything right in a particular level in kazakhstan where one of your teammates stays behind he's from kazakhstan so he stays behind to help this uh guerrilla fighter giri and uh, together they kind of help fight right. the bandits in the area. But in this particular playthrough, he didn't stay. So I was like, oh, I wonder what I did. Did I accidentally kill a tribal person? Because um, mm -hmm. like there's there's always there's always um, humans that you're not supposed to kill, but you can. And then humans, that's okay. So like bandits, it's okay to kill them. Um, in this particular level in Kazakhstan, there were um, there were tribals who would fight you. But if you killed the bandits, then they would surrender. And the tribals were basically like brainwashed slaves. So okay. you had to like try not to kill them. <laughs> um, but sometimes, you know, it's just like, oops, you know. So I think maybe I actually like killed a few. Uh, <laughs> isn't, isn't Metro Exodus like one of your favorite games? Is that correct? Yeah, the series the series is up mm -hmm. there. Um, it's, it's, it's too clunky to be like really high up there. But it's definitely as far as like, the environment, the kind of freakiness of it, the atmosphere. It's its a really fun post-apocalyptic game. Maybe I should game. give it a go. I, I, I think, I don't know if Exodus is on Game Pass. A couple of the Metros. <laughs> I mean, I don't have Game Pass, so it doesn't matter. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's definitely, so like if you get oh. into a radiation. Not on Game Pass. Okay. If you get into a radiation area, you have to hit a button to put on your mask. Your mask can get mm -hmm. damaged, so you have to put tape over it sometimes. Um, if you get blood on it, you hit a button to wipe it. You have to change your filter out. So, like, they really play with, like, you know, trying mm -hmm. to keep it realistic with not making it micromanaging. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. have to clean your weapons, like, very much like Red Dead. Uh, when you get to a workbench, you can clean them with chemicals. You can make bullets and, and stuff like that. The old mechanic in, like, 2033 and Last Light is there were new bullets that were being made that weren't as good, but then there were like military grade mm -hmm. bullets that were also currency, but they were really powerful. So you could choose either use them in a fight or buy things with them. So it was always kind of back and forth. But um, Exodus is really fun. It's a departure from the other two in the sense that it's not as linear. The DLC is a lot of fun. I played the Tale of Two Colonels DLC, amazing. Um, I was working through Sam's story. Sam is a U.S. Marine or recon or ranger. I can't remember if he was a ranger or marine that happened to be in Russia when the bombs fell. So now he's part of like this like special ops team that are like ex Spetnaz guys, and um, and uh, you get to play his story of leaving the team and trying to find his way back to Kansas to be his, to, to get with his dad again. I haven't actually played through the, the final part of that mm -hmm. DLC. So I plan on doing that after the, after this main through, but I've just been playing that. Nice. Very cool. So, yeah. And anything else Valheim, you want to give us an update on your Valheim playthrough? I haven't played Valheim since last week, taking a bit of a break. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I secretly don't believe that that's water. I'm just... <laughs> it's water. I don't believe this, you. I don't believe this you. Was, so real quick, the story behind this beautiful bottle. Uh, this was mead that was also brewed with uh, hibiscus and some hops. And it's called Viking's Blood because it was pretty red. It was 19%. And I've realized that rum is a very immediate, heady thing for me. Mead is okay. a slow burn where I was sitting there with a half this bottle of mead playing Valheim, drinking it straight out of the bottle. And I'm like, this ain't bad at all, you know? And then friggin' like an hour later, I'm like, has, I can't swing a sword anymore. You know, like, <laughs> it just nailed me. I couldn't, 
it snuck up on me real real crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> but no, I've I've emptied it out, cleaned it out a good bit and uh filled it with water because it's it's a it's a cool, really heavy ceramic bottle. I'm, I really It's a like really it. neat bottle. I, d- I like bottles. <laughs> You know I what? It, ceramic is a good uh, substance for drinking water out of. Many of us drink water out of plastic bottles, and there's a lot of endocrine disruptors in, in plastic. Uh-huh. Um, and so gla- if you can choose glass or ceramic or even metal, uh, it's a better choice. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask how you felt about stainless steel, because that's what most of my water bottles are. Yeah, stainless steel is, is quite good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Lovely. So I I've been I've been playing some games. Uh um yeah gosh where do I begin? So I've been playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um I have sort of my Cross Canada tour has taken a little bit of a break in terms of of movement. Uh, I'm still up in Tuktoyaktuk, Northern Canada. Haven't moved much from there. Did a lot of commercial flights and then I discovered gliding. And gliding has taken over my entire mic- Microsoft Flight Sim life, you guys. I have I have some pictures. Um, let me show you. So so this is um, me flying over the Grand Canyon. Um, and I, I don't think that my hotkeys will work. So I let me just set it for automatic while I while I go on about this. And and you might not be able to see it, but but that's okay. I see it on the stream. Um. So, so I did some gliding and I'm doing, um, if you, for those of you who are unfamiliar with gliding, gliding is, um, basically you're in an aircraft that uses, uh, sky thermals or pockets of heat that are generated from the sun and, uh, cumulus clouds, uh, to, to use as energy for flying. So, um, the whole science behind it is that you use gliders to keep your plane up in the air. And so I did a couple of flights um, over the weekend, and uh, these are some of the shots that I had taken. I was flying over the Grand Canyon, which was... I don't... I can't even describe how amazing it was. I've seen the Grand Canyon personally up close. I have sat on the edge of the Grand Canyon, and um, it's quite an experience flying over it is totally different um mm-hmm. and microsoft flight sim has provided me the ability to be able to do that and it's really cool yeah so i've been streaming quite a bit of gliding as well i got a huge raid from one of the bigger partnered streamers on twitch oh um, lovely yeah like 175 people came into my stream and uh was hanging out with me uh and it was super fun and then i had people gliding with me in the canyon Oh, um, nice. That were on the stream. And so they had their glider. Some had jet planes, but, you know, we don't talk about that. Um, and <laughs> the thing about gliding is that it's it's completely silent. There's no engine noise. There's nothing. Right. That There's would nothing. be a very different sort of feeling i mean if the if the pictures don't do it justice i mean you have to you have to catch one of my streams where i'm gliding um because i listen to like classical music and like cinematic movie soundtracks and it's just it's all very immersive and and really nice so yeah so gliding is life now um i'm i'm complete i don't need to do anything else that that is my life Um, yeah, so these are the pictures, uh, and, uh, you know, I got so immersed in gliding that Carlo and I ended up watching the Into the Canyon, uh, documentary, which if you guys are unfamiliar with this, it is about a journalist and photographer who decide that they're going to hike the entire length of the Grand Canyon, uh, which is, is no easy feat. Um, they did it over several months. Uh, it was about 780 kilometers in total, uh, and um, a lot of near deaths experiences for them. Um, if you haven't watched it, it's on Disney Plus. I recommend that you check it out. It's absolutely transformative. They also go on about the Grand Canyon as an experience in terms of tourism. And they showcase a uh, scenario in which there is a Navajo Nation 
uh, council that is fighting against preventing the development of a tourist site within the canyon that creates a tramway that go down that goes down into the canyon um anyways by the end of the documentary they won the argument or the case in court um and the land is protected and it's this wonderful story about how the grand canyon has remained protected after after all of that battle so it's lovely Good. yeah yeah i know right and and they also showcase the current tourism that's happening and how there's like hundreds of helicopter tours that happen every single day that that like the noise the noise pollution from those helicopters is like inadvertently affecting the ecosystem and the wildlife in the canyon itself it's terrible anyways if you haven't had the chance to visit the Grand Canyon, I recommend that you do so. So that's my Microsoft Flight Sim gliding slash canyon experience. Um, I also played Valheim with Rick, uh, which was quite a bit of fun. Um, I'm I'm not entirely sure if Valheim is is for me. I, I don't know. Rick, you made yeah, a good it's... point that I, I have this this um, affinity for video games that are realistic. Uh, and Valheim doesn't quite scratch that itch. We're just not low res. I mean, it's yeah, it's, yeah. It's it was it was pretty good. I, I think really I, like it though. I want to dive a little bit more into the building. Yeah, um, you have to. I didn't get enough time really to to do that, so I want to do that as well. You yeah. should you should see you should see my joint. I have like cobblestone like walkways and roadways i have arches and banners hanging i have a giant i have a nice bed and fireplaces and shields hanging across i have a mead hall with like mead a mead on the hall table. i do have a mead hall and i have like fermenters to make mead and of course you do oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not even basement surprised my workshops yeah it's 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 you'd be surprised on the amount of stuff that you can do in that game and how you can build like yeah. somebody with mods built notre dame and what about sarah Hmm? what is she, she like oh she's a builder yeah she's she's a regular regular old bob the builder she built this we have like a bunch of portals like eventually you can build portals so instead of having to sail or walk everywhere you can drop a portal down and then kind of fast travel between places and so our portals were always getting attacked by baddies so she decided to build a portal castle which ended up being like a, a half like it ended up being a half circle really tall stone with big giant beams as you know supports it was two floors so there's just two j long rows of portals now i mean she's she's a crazy builder every time i build a house it's like this like kind of unspoken competition <laughs> sarah built this dope house <clears throat> and, then and then our buddy have this little well, then our buddy, all sad <laughs> then our buddy built a really nice house then like i built a pretty cool house and then like sarah built this crazy castle it's like because <laughs> you keep unlocking keep... new things so it, it is literally the definition of keeping up with the joneses yes mm -hmm. it is well uh whatever the joneses would be in viking mm -hmm. whatever Right. Anyways, um, I have taken out of the shelf and <sighs> blown off the dust from Farm Sim 19. Oh my goodness! I know. I know. Pre don't COVID game. Don't judge me. It's 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 I happened. Like those streams. It's happened again. I miss those streams. Yeah, I'm on a new map now. It's called uh, Lone Oak, and is it uh, just one tree? <laughs> you would think that, but it's not the case. Um. I've got this amazing farm with this huge shop and um, oh my God, I downloaded a new lawnmower mod and holy crap, we can race lawnmowers now and it's going to be incredible. You guys, the lawnmowers, all I want to do, all I want to do is farms in farm sim now, forget the crops, forget the, <laughs> forget the beets and the corn and the cows and the chickens. All I want to do is mow grass. <laughs> That is so funny. It's awful. I don't know what. Anyways, so yeah, so I so I'm in Lone Oak. Uh, it's a great time, and uh, been streaming a lot of that this past week. Uh, it's really nice to sort of get in back into my steering wheel, my Logitech G29 steering wheel. Um, I've been really focused on flight sims lately, and and the new hardware that has come with uh, the 
uh, Bravo Throttle Quadrant uh, from Honeycomb. Uh, and so I thought, you know what, why don't I go back to my steering wheel and do some farm sim and just get immersed? Why are you laughing, Rick? The Bravo Throttle Quadrant just sounds like one of those... That's what it's called. So I they know, have know, they have a series of three things. They have they have the Alpha Yoke, the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and then the new product that's coming out is the um, the Charlie rudder pedals. Alpha Bravo Charlie. It yeah, I know, I get it, but it sounds like it's something from like Home Improvement, where like Tim the Tool Man's like, "This is my Astrobot three five thousand. Oh, that's totally what it is. Collects my golf balls for me. Let me tell you this about little, my this let little me, bad boy right here. Well, let me tell you about my mulch at thirty two hundred. <laughs> okay, it's just, you're wearing the white Nike tennis shoes you get at Walmart. Right? Oh yeah, and like, yeah. The, and everybody can hands. tell. Everybody can tell when you get new runners because they're so white. White. They're and so you have white. Your shirt tucked in, but you don't have a belt. <laughs> it's so bad. That's the Bravo Charlie Quadrant or whatever it was. Yeah. Bravo Throttle. Qu- yeah. It just sounded like that. Yeah. So so I I've I've picked up the farm sim once again. Uh, I've got one crop of soybeans and another crop of sunflowers. I'm kind of oh ex- sunflowers. You're gonna have a whole field of sunflowers. I am really excited. I've never grown sunflowers before. Yeah. I'm so excited. I know. You have to catch it. I demand it. screenshots. Okay, okay. I'll take screenshots for the next episode of that Fallout show or uh sorry, Game Sack podcast. Well, it's all the same. Um so, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Do they have like real they have like real stuff in the game, right? Like in the farm sim, there's a like, real licensed equipment? Yes. Okay. Like John Deere and Uh-huh. Stuff. Okay. For the zero turn mowers, uh, somebody. That's somebody... what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, but no, we did it. For the zero turn mowers, do they have bad boy mowers? No. So okay. Oh. So they have this thing called 82 Tools, um, and they've they've released this mod pack of zero turn mowers, and the mowers are called Mulchit mowers. Uh, um, so I guess they're kind of they're more a mulcher than a mower than anything. But this sucker. The sucker goes like 30 kilometers an hour. It's crazy. Fantastic. You, you can cut the whole field Slaps in about 10 minutes. It's you're, wild. You're wild, I tell you. <laughs> the sucker. Hey, this here sucker can go 32 kilometers it's an hour. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, we were, I, I tried it out on It'll stream. It'll like the Dickens. And then we were talking about building racetracks, and we want to race lawnmowers now, and it's this whole thing. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. That is lovely. I'm really excited. I am, I'm super pumped that I got back into to Farm Sim, and everybody loves the Farm Sim streams, so yeah, it's, so it's more so... of the Farm Sim will come. It, it will happen. Don't you worry. I can't mm-hmm. explain why they're fast. It's like Bob Ross. Paint. People love them. All I do is yes. drive across a field, but people love them. I don't understand it. Yeah. Four miles, like you can definitely come and cut my lawn. She's got like four yeah. acres of Mine grass too. that she has to cut Ooh. every two weeks. So, yeah. I, I hope a... she at least has a riding lawn mower. There were times where I would go up Ugh. there in the summer, and we would have t- a dual mower, like 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 showdown with alcohol and we just be like listening to tunes cranked full just like mowing grass like not a care in the world 40 degrees outside it's like hotter than hell yeah yeah anyways so so that's that's farm sim 19 um but we need to talk about festival shaleen we need we need... I, I have missed some festival so so rick and shaleen and i you guys have been working on the festival of fish aka festival as part of sea of thieves um thursday yesterday marked the third part and final part of the festival of fish uh with rare sea of thieves hunters call event and we have been working diligently to try and get uh, these these freaking fish caught and tonight we're gonna get some fishing done i'm excited Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so what do you think about the fish festival so far? This is this is the natural <laughs> segue festivals. into your gameplay. It's just... I think it's uh, I've missed Sea of Thieves, and I really the fishing is just fun. It's just fun. So it's it's very relaxing. It's lovely. Um, and I I found Sea of Thieves to be such a different experience now that you're like the master of Sea of Thieves. Well, I don't. I, 
See, that's the thing. I don't know what you're talking about because I'm not a master. <laughs> Like, I'm not even close, but... See, see, I left for a year, and I came back, and you were the Dread Pirate Roberts! Yeah, that's true. He is... It's if, okay, if you're not going to, like, self-promote yourself to master, you're at least, like, captain level. Like, <laughs> Jack Sparrow level of, of shenanigan radio. There are the Dread Pirate Roberts. There are, tips, there are tips and tricks that I have learned from people who I'm going to plug right now on the podcast. Octagon Ron, Hardware Guy, Fox Die, Carities... Um, Never Again Ken, Grim235, go check them out on Twitch. They are avid Sea of Thieves streamer. They are the people that taught me everything I need to know. Lovely. So, well, they but, did a good job. But I love it's Sea of Thieves, a, and I'm glad that you guys experience. I'm yeah. glad you guys are back in it. Yeah. I hope Arching can join us soon. I hope so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be lovely. Um, so, did, did you have some more festival, or are we? I uh, I'm excited. Um, my 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 brother and I have been doing festival as well. Um, because now that I have him on Discord, it's like a whole new world for him. So, <laughs> um, but uh, we we worked at some of the stormfish, and oh my god, the stormfish are terrible. I don't think oh. you guys did part two. Did you finish part two? No, no I only no. did part one. Part two is is it's i mean you can still finish it murder you can still finish it until march 18 but the stormfish is so hard because like you need at least two people on a boat um one has to be driving in the storm the right. other the other has to be trying to catch stormfish and the thing about being in the storm trying to catch stormfish is that you can't catch stormfish in the storm when the boat is moving you have to anchor or else the game like bugs out there were more times that I can count on one hand where I had a stormfish coming up to my hook and because the boat was moving, it like bugged out and took off. And I was like, no, <laughs> that was a trophy stormfish. I'm so mad. So, um, so yeah, that, I'm glad that that's over. I'm glad that I got it done. Now what we have to do is splash tails, battle gills and devil fish. Oh, devilfish! How do you get devilfish? That means we get to go into the the volcano area, right? Yes. Oh, God. So Gorgeous. Splash I'm tails, so please. Splash tails, super easy to catch. They're like they're like the the Ford Focus of a, fish. A dozen. <laughs> um, you can catch them anywhere on the map. The devilfish, you gotta get them in the volcano region, and then the the battle gills are caught at the the active battles so you either have to have a, a ghost ship around you that has been aggroed or you have to be at a fort that is active and find a spot where skellies aren't going to get you so that sounds difficult yeah it's gonna be fun i'm excited anyways that's my gameplay lovely uh well surprising absolutely no one i'm still playing animal crossing and i'm really excited about it because the snow is gone uh, it was snowy in Animal Crossing for like two months, and I was so tired of snow. Welcome was, to my uh, life. Welcome uh, to my real awful. life. It's but like... the snow has melted, and the lovely green grass of spring has returned, and I'm so happy about it. Um, I, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to get uh, stuck with bad turnip prices this week. <laughs> I, I invested very heavily in turnips on Sunday because I had really low turnip price. It was really good. Oh my God. I and I you. bought a lot of turnips. Did you just save them for next week? No, they rot. They last a week uh, and then they rot. Uh, so I have to sell these things by tomorrow. Shalene's going to be selling turnip jelly, turnip jam, <laughs> turnip salsa. For preserves. And mom and I have been like checking turnip prices on both of our islands every day and and just terrible terrible turnip prices we haven't even had a break-even turnip price yet <laughs> so i'm getting really nervous that i am going to lose a lot of bells on these turnips but we'll see how it goes so if you guys have great turnip prices let me know um yes it was it was it was not the best situation um I did uh, buy a, a leprechaun outfit in anticipation of St. Patrick's Day. I was really excited about that. So my oh, Animal a, Crossing character is that has a, March a little... March 17th? It's, it's the, yeah, it's this month. Uh, so my little Animal Crossing character has got a leprechaun outfit and like a, a glass of, of green beer, um, nice. which is great. So it's great. Yeah, she's going to get lit. It's going to be great. I wonder <laughs> if they're going to do... <laughs> 
I wonder if they're going to do a thing for Sea of Thieves where you drink green grog. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> you know what's weird? I hate the whole green beer thing. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Yeah, but it's you're easy. like an you're like a beer elitist, though. No, I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're like I only drink. You, you're a bit IPAs. of a, a yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. yes. you're a snob. Yeah. I only beer. drink mead floating in a man's hat served with a plum. You know, <laughs> like that's what in a, mm-hmm. in a bowler. With a plum. <laughs> Uh, no i don't know i guess i I guess it's funny because like it's the one time i've ever felt (laughs) slight like slight slight like appropriation with the whole like everybody's irish and it's just like yeah oh yeah like saint patrick's day is is, like super racist it's 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 the same incredibly racist yeah Yeah. it it, it, it gets me a little bit with like the green beer and like Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. hi everybody we're all irish today hey man my hey man i i'm with you my family's from kilkenny so (laughs) the half of me that's not a lopez is irish so. <laughs> so that's where you get your spark from. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm prepared. My little Animal Crossing character is ready for St. Patrick's Day. She's she's prepared. Um, Rick, we didn't talk about the medium during your gameplay, so we should talk about it now. Sure, yeah, man. This game is scary, you guys. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. There's Okay, the last time we had a podcast... It was just like an interesting story. We're in a haunted hotel and it's interesting. We're, we're you know, talking to ghosts. Okay, things have taken a turn, my friends. Things have taken a turn. <laughs> there is now a horrifying monster that wants to wear our skin. And, and there's skin doors that we have to cut through with like a little box car. No, Ooh. it's not even box skin. Cutter. Wait a minute. Skin doors? Yes! Yeah. They're doors made of flesh and you slice through it. Ooh. Ooh, and it makes a little wet noise. And oh. it's really bad. Oh. So, like, what it is, it's not even a box cutter. It's literally a straight razor blade. But because it's, like, in the other side, it's, like, a straight razor blade with, like, really jagged. It's not straight anymore. Let's just put it that way. So you got to, like... Serrated. It's a serrated blade. Yeah, but like serrated, like not well, you know, just <laughs> not intentionally serrated. Yeah, like if you stick someone with this, it's not a good tetanus. Okay, for sure. Um, yeah, this, and, so... and the monster that is that is chasing you is extremely horrifying, Bender. He's extremely <laughs> horrifying, <laughs> and he wants to wear our skin. Yes, he, that's where I got the line earlier, where it's like, "Let me try you on." Is what he says as he chases it, you. It rubs Which, the lotion on its well, skin. <laughs> the weird thing is, is we I've played a lot of horror games. I've never heard anything say that to me before. And so when a new idea pops in your head that you just didn't really think would be a possibility, it's a little creepy. And he's on point, by the way. He's on point like a ballerina as he chases he you. He is on Perfect. point. It's wild. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Right. It's a real creepy monster. And it's it's very strange because there's like um, there's these alternate worlds happening. Uh, there's like the ghost world and the real world. Uh-huh. And in the beginning, we were only in danger in the ghost world, but yeah. now this thing can get us in the real world, and it's a dang problem. It. You can't see it. It's, it's a like, dang it's, problem. It's it's invisible, <laughs> but you can see a shimmer. So as it walks around, you have to pay attention to where the shimmer is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, so. It's 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 terrifying it's, it's fun. terrifying it's great it did, um, the game did make me jump once and i yelped it was really the first time I, yeah i was surprised because it's like the cut scene is a cut scene where you're looking through this gap in the door and like you're like looking through it like this your eyes up against it and there's this tub in this nasty bathroom this tub's full of blood and it's spilling over mm. and it's trickling towards the door and you're kind of like trying to look up to see down to see this is getting closer to the door then out of nowhere like a fleshy colored thing with an eyeball like pops up and like looks back at you through the door hole and i was just like in the middle of talking to shleen was just like because ah! <laughs> like i wasn't Jeez. expecting that 
right. such a switch from like a blood trickle to a thing right. looking at you. Yeah, yeah and, it, uh, it yeah, didn't that, fit that the tone. Me. It's not a jump scare type of game, really. Not really. I wasn't but expecting I, a jump scare. I did squeal uh, when when the little ghost girl appeared in the mirror. It was it was really scary. You did. Goodness. I, I yeah. You can catch the replays of all of these of all of these medium streams on YouTube. Um, if you if you would like to see those, it's uh, youtube.com slash we just love games. Wonderful. Um, they're already here watching the stream. Oh, you yeah. mean for the audio listeners listening at home? Yeah. Right. I knew that. Mm -hmm. um, the medium streams is what I was talking about. Uh -huh. uh, they're not watching that right now. They're watching an episode of GameStack, the ones that are mm -hmm. here. So they might be interested in, in our medium shenanigans. They're not too large. They're not too small. <laughs> And just just got his eyes closed. <laughs> like, uh. I've been playing a lot of Tetris, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Tetris. I, I, just, In... mm -hmm. I just caught Vendor's subtle head shake on stream with his eyes closed. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those times when Vendor is like, why do I hang out with these guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. A lot fine. of Tetris <laughs> lately. And I'm trying to like brush up my Tetris foo. Uh, because uh, Tim Twig has challenged me to a Tetris battle. Oh, so, no. <laughs> yes. And uh, of course, I'm going, I'm pl I have every intention of Accepting. utterly destroying him. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, That's too different. Yeah. I'm going to okay. mop the floor with this man. Right. It's, it's, You're going to make yes. him uninstall Tetris, is what's going to yes. happen. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I will crush him. <laughs> and. Uh, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, so I, I played some more Tetris Effect. I think I talked about that on the last show. Um, and I've also started up Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh. Um, Puyo Puyo Tetris is, uh, I guess Puyo Puyo is like kind of a kind of a Dr. Mario sort of game. Um, but Puyo Puyo Tetris is a mashup of Puyo Puyo with Tetris. And there is a, a little adventure mode that you oh, can cute. play through that has an adorable anime visual novel between uh, between Tetris matches. So I've really been enjoying that. It's very, very cute. And uh, it's hmm. it's a lovely way to end the evening, just um, playing I'm, some I'm, Tetris. I'm just reading online. The title of Puyo Puyo comes from the Japanese word yawn, meaning four, signifying the fourth game in the series. Uh, Van Sylvan says Puyo Puyo Tetris equals not real Tetris. Not and not I real would Tetris. like to argue with that. I would say this is probably one of the purest Tetris games that I've played in a long time. Um, the actual the layout of te it feels so so true to that original Tetris experience. It's it's really Chef's kiss. I mm -hmm. love it. Wonderful. So, um, and uh, did you have something? Did you have, uh, no, continue. Okay, I felt like you were you were saying something. And I no, I was thinking out loud. It's fine. Okay. <clears throat> um, I do, I do have a sort of general observation about myself that I, I've realized lately. I haven't really been into gaming as much lately. I've been kind of not, not feeling it. Um. And I haven't been in the mood to try new things. Um, I, I've been going through some personal things that have been difficult and it's it's sort of led to me not having that same like drive that I always have had. Um, and I, I don't feel like starting new games lately because all the games are so big, like it's, it's intimidating and I don't wanna tackle something new. But um, I did, I did, I got this email um, about a game called Into a Dream. And this is an indie game. It was made by one guy and it's, it's classic, you know, indie game fodder. You're trying to help a man with depression cope with his depression by entering his dreams, right? So that's the premise of this game made by one guy. Um, and it, it has a very charming art style, sort of um, a very simplistic, but beautiful, um, something like Limbo, uh, only only not so dark. Um, 
and I was intrigued. I wanted to try this game. So um, they actually sent me a code to check it out. So thank you for that. Uh, and I played it on PS4. It's also available on Switch and PC. And guys, this game, I feel like, has has helped me get over this hump of really? not being... Yeah. Um, and it, it, the gameplay itself is not set in the world on fire. Um, there's some platforming that is incredibly wonky. Incredibly, incredibly wonky. And there is uh, a, a little bit of traditional point and click adventure game style things. Like mm -hmm. you need to pick up this item and use it somewhere else. You know, you need to, um, you do this thing that triggers this action that gets you an item to use elsewhere. And then you can progress, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Simple puzzles. Um, but the real meaningful thing about this game is the story. And the story gets really compelling really fast. You are in this character's dream and you don't really know why you're in his dream, but you're there and you're trying to help him with his, his severe depression situation, but you're in his dream and he is not a reliable narrator. So you travel through different experience in his, in his life. You see different stages of his family life and his work career and uh sometimes they conflict with each other so mm -hmm. you have to figure out what's real what's not real uh, what happened to this man what's happening with his family and uh, you sort of get to know all of the different people in his life his his partner at his company and his wife and daughter and their dog and his mother and um it's fascinating. It's just fascinating. And I love the way that they've told this story in a collection of fractured bits and pieces. And they fit together in this beautiful sort of a, a mosaic, a mosaic. It's like, it's, it's really cool. It was a fascinating game. Um, it took me about four hours to get through. Um, there were, um, you revisit sometimes the same location in different seasons and different times mm. of, of his life. So uh, you'll see a house in when it's new and later on when it's in poor repair. Um, and it was a really cool experience. So I highly recommend Into a Dream for uh, anybody who likes that kind of thing. Um, visual Wonderful. novels, walking simulators. It was really cool. And after I finished it, I just wanted to start more games. So oh it felt really good i i felt like uh yeah this is this is what i love about this medium is is wow. the ability to see these stories that you know movies can't give me a story like this books can't give me a story like this only a game can tell a story in this maybe way. maybe it's time well i mean i'm excited for march 18 um and and maybe it's time that we pick up the council again yeah, that would be fun times. I mm -hmm. can drive this time and you can make the decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, yeah, that's all I have. Wonderful. Um, well, uh, thank you for sharing, of course. Uh, we do have an email. What? We have an email. Um, yes. And uh, Rick, would would you like to go through the email for us? I, I would. This one comes from Tibor. All right, here we go. Good morning, y'all. Hope you're doing well. I've heard that a flock of tumbleweeds have taken shelter in your inbox. Similar <laughs> when I put my philosophical thoughts on Discord at 2 a.m. Mountain Time, which is just about lunchtime in Turkmenistan. So I decided I could put it here, too. Question slash game for you three to answer. You've just leveled up in life, and you can choose an ability. One, you can play any old game, any time, and while doing it, you temporarily forget the graphical advances that happened since and feel as if it's a current next-gen game. Simply put, you don't recognize the game's aging. Use this skill as many times as you want. Or pick three games you love, and you'll forget all their story, and you can replay them as a new experience. You can only use this on three games. If you cannot decide, you pick the three um, which is giving Rick sideburns to a charity you can choose. <laughs> After the decision, what games will you play? Tibor. I really liked this email because... This was a fun question. It, yeah. And um, the first thing I thought of with number one was like, 
banjo kazooie like like definitely definitely play the banjo kazooies um the pick three games and you love and forget all their story that's also intriguing but it's only three games and you can only do it for three i think i'd have to go with option one personally and i would definitely hit up those in 64 games again Lee. Thunder, what would you do? That's that's tough. I mean, uh, pick uh, the the second option. Picking three games um, that I love for their stories uh, seems quite easy. I think um, one of them would be any of the games from the Fallout series, um, and then of course Detroit Become Human, and probably one of the Life is Strange games. Um, but if I were to think back on the first option in playing any old game, it would probably be Mario Kart. Well, it's the thing. You have to pick one or the other. One or two. Well, and this is the thing I can't pick, so I'm picking both, Rick. <laughs> um, so Mario Kart, I can still remember when I had those feelings of, wow, this is the best graphics I've ever seen. Yeah. That's why I picked number one, because you can do any game at any time, unlimited, where number two, you only get three. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I would. I don't know. Rick, Shalene, Shalene, you pick. Shalene. Just okay. Pick um. So I'm number one does not appeal to me because oh. I I still love old games for what they are. You know, I go back and and play the ye old retro games, and I love pixel art, and I I love the incredibly strange polygons of n64 games mm. and i still love them and their graphics for what they are so option one does not hold any any uh any allure for me uh so i'm definitely picking number two to forget the story of three games that i love and immediately i know that two of the games are going to be fallout <laughs> three and dishonored two uh, uh which that. were two games that i loved learning yeah. every every little detail about right. i'm not sure what i would choose for the third game uh you mentioned detroit become human and that made me think maybe that one i was really obsessed with detroit for quite a while um but i i think i'll reserve the choice of my third game until after i've replayed <laughs> fallout 3 and, and dishonored 2 with fresh eyes i don't I know that you say that you can appreciate the games for what they were, but like if you go back and you look at Shadows of the Empire now, like it didn't, it doesn't, it, it, it kind of. What is Shadows of the Empire? Have I, is that something I've played? Maybe, maybe not. It's I don't Star think Wars game for the sixty four. It's not something I've played. It was awesome it was awesome. You know what? Play, okay, just... my Nintendo sixty four games were like Mario sixty four, Donkey up. Kong sixty four. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to try and play Mario Kart 64 with my G, with my Logitech G29. <gasps> Do it. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> right? How that amazing would, be would that be? Incredible. Peach that Peach incredible. Peach Peach, here I come. <laughs> Some 64 games still hold up with, as far as graphic content like yeah. GoldenEye, Mario 64. Yeah. Um Star Fox because it was polygonal anyway. Mm -hmm. What else were you going to say, Shirley? The, the thing is, these games that don't hold up probably weren't that great when you played them the first that time you not, just didn't know better you just true. didn't know Shadows better of the empire was a great game which is terrible graphics <laughs> shots fired shots fired <laughs> you fought boba fett you got to fly in a similar thing to the millennium falcon you were a bounty hunter it was awesome <laughs> well rt said thank you for the email yeah. And for those of you who would like to send us an email, all you have to do is go to uh, your email inbox, compose a new email, and type in that two field info at we just love got games dot com. Um, that is a show, guys. Uh, okay. Don't forget, next Friday, we're going to be hosting that Fallout show right here, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard, 8 uh, Eastern, 6.30 uh, sorry, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. That follow show next Friday. Also on Monday, Joshy Theater. Don't forget to catch that at, uh, I believe, 12 Pacific Standard. This Sunday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard, which would be 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are interested in a bedtime story, you can join me for Vendor's Book Nook on Discord. 
That's um, good timing. That'll be right after Survival Horror Sunday. So they can calm down yes. with uh, Vendor's with Book Nook. Yes, and we're going to be diving into Carl Sagan, The Demon Haunted World. So be sure to join us at that time. And you'll also get an, in, uh, uh, an announcement in the Discord uh, announcements page. Rick, go ahead. S Survival Horror Sunday will not be happening this week. Oh, right. Yeah. We'll do it next week. Perfect. Um, tomorrow, I will be streaming some Sea of Thieves with Never Again Ken on my own channel. So if you're interested in hanging out and sailing with us, we uh, push off the dock at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard, 12 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, don't forget, you can email us at info at wejustlovegames.com. You can find us on Twitter at We Just Love Games, uh, Shaleen at Shaleen L, Rick at McRick. Rick McVick, Vendertron at Vendertron N. Uh, we also have Facebook things, um, facebook.com slash we just love games, facebook.com slash group slash we just love games. We're also on Discord. If you are listening live, scroll down right below us. The Discord link is there, or you can send us a personal message on any social media platform, and we will make sure that you get the Discord link. Uh, we record the show live at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard, Eastern Standard Time, 8.30 p.m. on twitch.tv slash we just have games. We are also on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and review uh, the show. We will shout you out, of course. We love those emails. Make sure that you you send us some more crazy and zany emails. Once again, thank you for listening. Does either of you have a last word? Nothing? Let me try you on. <laughs> okay, Buffalo Bill. <laughs>